Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So today we have a little bit of an unboxing, unbagging to do. Some of it are parts for guitars and some of it is some gear for guitars. So let's get into the parts first. I'm going to push the gear off to the side and I get my little razor blade over here. I got some used razor blades that I hold on to that are still sharp enough for working with but not really uh, good enough for uh, other things that I need a real sharp razor blade for when I'm working on guitars. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. I got an idea of what it is. I'm hoping it is something that I purchased for uh, purchased, purchased for the Kelly guitar, which it kind of looks like maybe not. So what do I got here? Alright, so I got a bag of gold neck screws in gold and then I have a bag of well not a bag but they will be in a bag what are these okay so these are the silver or chrome plated ones so that's telling me I know what these are so I ordered a bunch of these neck plates these are chrome plated real nice actually very good quality as far as the plating goes I got them in gold or silver and I got them in gold yeah, these are very good quality, really nice. No pitting on them, no nothing. All right, so that's that. So a lot of these guitars I end up getting to have basic neck plates on them. They're either damaged or there's something going on with them to where um, they just, you know, they don't look right. And when they're chrome plated or gold plated or even black anodized uh, or however the plating is I don't know if it's anodized black or if it's a uh, powder coating or whatever but trying to paint them is you could do it but because of the location of them they kind of you know get a little bit messed up and I don't want that plating holds up better the black plating or anodized plating or whatever they're using holds up a lot better than just painting it with some type of black paint or something. So I'm going to bag these up. Did I took two bags. Oh yeah, here's the other one. Because I want to keep these separate in a separate drawer. I don't want to mix these with the plates themselves because that could end up scratching or damaging the plates and I don't want that. So I have a shitload of parts drawers, new, used, you know, whatever. And when I consider used, uh, it's got to look like new. And if it doesn't look like new, then I won't use it. I'm not one for doing relicking. Uh, if I screw up a guitar or something and it doesn't come out the way that I want it to come out, I will end up redoing it until it comes out the way that I want it to come out. I'm not one for saying, okay, well you know what it didn't come out the way it is so let's let's relic it no i don't do that so having a used neck plate or that looks like shit yeah i don't do that unless this for somebody else and they want that because their guitar has been put through uh the history of playing and gigging and everything else then i'll sit there and say okay well if you want that then i'll put your original back on without touching it so we go into package number two yeah this is what i was looking for so here i got three black neck plates screws they also these also come with the gasket that goes between it which is just a rubber framed uh or not framed rubber but framed plastic that goes behind the neck plate to kind of protect the guitar a little bit i have some of those that are in really good shape so i'm not worried about uh like with the gold and the silver one okay that's it for that this is something i've been kind of waiting for too and uh, let's go ahead and open this. I got more parts that are on its way, plus a couple more guitars. And I got a couple of t shirts that are coming because I'm going to be doing another Iron Maiden themed guitar. All right, this I've been kind of waiting for. 
This is the chug pedal. You know, I'm kind of, I like metal. I'm not one, I'm not a country guy. I'm not, uh, uh, I like classic rock. Some of it I've played a little bit of. Um, not into pop, not so much into hip hop, not so much into a lot of different types of music. Mostly metal I like, especially the old metal. And I picked up this to kind of go with kind of go with my playing a little bit for distortion and stuff. So here it is the pedal and somewhere just does not come with a power supply which I have the power supply already and then you got your little feet that go on here. So this probably have to take the screws out of it, open it up, there's probably a 9 volt battery that goes inside here. But uh, yeah, so I picked this up brand new and uh, I like the way it looks. This is all carved. This is not, uh, it's very sharp too. Wow. The edges of this is really sharp. This is all carved. This is not like a, a silk screen that's over the uh, aluminum or anything. So yeah, and I got the instructions right here. So I thought there would be a power supply for this. You know, I actually did some more reading when I bought it, but yeah, this is the chug. Not a big deal. My pedal board has got its own power supply and it seems to handle pretty good with everything else. So right here, the neck is dry to handle for the Jackson guitar. And I'm putting my logo on the back of it, one of one, and then the date on the back of this as well. I just, uh, this has not been sanded, this has not been polished at all. This is pretty much it out of the spray can, and it feels awesome. There is no roughness to it. I don't have to buff this or nothing. There's no orange peeling to it, and it came out beautiful. The only thing I have is a little bit on the corner over here where some of the, uh, uh, clear settled. Now I'm using the 2K Max Spray or Spray Max. Uh, 2k clear on this and uh, yeah this came out really really nice and other than that one spot over here I really don't have to do any type of buffing on it you can see it came out really really nice so here's where the truss rod and the nut is going to go right over that I have to cut out for the truss rod adjustment and then remove the tape over the fretboard I also have to do a um, I don't think I have to do a fret leveling on this thing. I think I checked it out and it came out all right. But I definitely have to do something about the sharp edges on this. It's got a little bit of sharp edges. I had this neck made for me for the Jackson guitar uh, by someone local over here. They did a scarf drawing on it. And, uh, yeah, so that worked out pretty damn good. So I ended up ordering, I got a hold of House of Color. I didn't know this, but they actually sell aerosol cans of paints that uh, are custom colors. So again, I picked up the metallic silver for the um, Schecter SGR guitar. I got metallic silver. I got a what they call a black diamond color. And then I have a candy apple red that's coming up. Um, those are going to be the colors that are going to go into the Schecter guitar as far as getting the ghost spray effect of the flaming uh, underneath the candy apple red. So it's going to look like a candy apple red guitar, but when you get it into the lighting in a certain way, you're going to see, like, not a hologram, but you're going to see the flame come out. And with having the black diamond, which is kind of like a, um, uh, a metal flake type of a spray that's going to come out, the way that I'm going to do this, it's going to kind of pop out, especially in the light. You'll end up seeing the difference of the transfer of colors through the candy apple red. If you spray candy apple red the right way, you should be able to have it transparent. If you go and put like 15 coats of candy apple red on something, there's going to be no transparency through it. and It's going to be like just a red paint with a... Um, kind of like a pearl into it or something like that not really what I'm looking for so I gotta be careful with the spraying so what's going to happen first is the body is going to get sanded down all right and it's going to be wet sanded with uh, 800 grit sandpaper and there is no really um, damage besides one small chip that's on the top corner of the body on the edge on the back of the guitar that could be easily fixed with almost anything that I've got over here I can either uh, CA glue fill it uh, hit it with black um, the back of the guitar I'm probably going to end up painting it with the uh, 
black diamond on the back of the guitar, but the front guitar of the guitar is going to get the silver, metallic silver. Then I'm going to end up doing the striping and stuff that I want with the flaming with the black. Actually, no, I have to reverse this. So what's going to happen is I have to spray the body first, do my masking and spray the body with the black diamond, mask over that, then spray the, uh, the silver, and then do the candy red after that. It's been a long time since I did something like this, so I have to kind of like go through and not rethink it, but just look at what I'm doing and how I'm doing it before I get it done because there's an easy way of doing this and there's a hard way of doing this. And I'm gonna go the easy way of doing it because there's a less work involved in getting it done and stuff like that and getting a nice finish uh, paint job afterwards. But since I'm going with three different types plus a clear that's gonna go over there, this will get the 2K clear coat on it, no epoxy resins. I'm not gonna end up doing that uh, until I start working on anything that I'm gonna do a um, uh, veneer on or cloth top on that that's what i'm going to start doing now i'm going to go with just regular clear coats instead of doing the epoxy resins for everything epoxy resin is not too bad and with the the guitar let's see let me see if i can get it in the light over here the jackson's a little dusty because it's been kind of sitting for a while because i've been waiting for some parts to show up. Make sure it's nice and flat. All right. So here's the body, and it's it's basically done. I really don't have to do anything with it besides mount the neck to it. I'm still waiting for the pickup rings to show up before I can put the pickups in. Everything is pretty much done. But the only problem with it is the epoxy that I end up using. And you guys know I've been using this stuff like crazy. Um. I think I'm the only one at Menards who buys this stuff. And because of that, I'm starting to notice that I'm having some issues with the epoxy uh, during the curing time of that. And not really as far as drying, it dries pretty much hard as a rock, not having any problems with sanding or anything else, but the pouring part of it afterwards, the curing process that it goes through with heating up and everything else, uh, is starting to kind of do some funny shit and I'm not liking it at all so the outcome of like this one here like this corner here this edge over here a little bit and there's a side over here where it didn't flow I don't know if the epoxy just doesn't like sharp edges and there's a lot of them on this guitar uh, or if it was something wrong with the epoxy but I've done a lot of stuff with the epoxy resins including stuff with sharp edges on it and never had an issue with it until now so so I want to get out of the epoxy. If I do something like this again, which I'm sure I will, uh, it's going to be you know done the same way. Now doing something like this with the different layers of epoxy. When I did the first epoxy pour on this and we had the colors inside of it, this is what I mean about the overlaying of colors. And then I did the second pour of trying to do the same thing. If before this was all background was all blue all right and now you can see some reds coming through here over here there's a little bit of yellows coming through over here or the golds and stuff coming through and during the sanding process you know you're removing layers all right so what i ended up doing is the pattern because this wasn't here before the first pour this came up on the second pour but thinning out the epoxy resin started making this a little bit more transparent also making the blue a little bit more transparent to have more of the other colors popping out now i still want to get this a uh, picture of this thing under the sunlight to see the different colors of the uh pearls that's inside of the uh the powder that i mixed with the epoxy to see how that's going to pop out under fluorescent lighting you, you see it but you don't see it under a LED um, flashlight, oh, it really pops out, really comes out to you. So under like natural lighting as far as sunlight goes, and then moving it out, it's going to look like a custom paint job on a motorcycle or a car or something. And 
that's what I'm wanting to look for with this. So again, like all the edges are tapered on an angle the way they're supposed to be. There are sharp edges over here to where they're not just rounded over. There are flat edges. That's all black. The edges are all done in black. See, there's a little dust over here. And then the back of it is done kind of like a natural, uh, but I did add a black pearl uh, tint to the epoxy resin to darken up from the mahogany, natural mahogany, to what it is now. So even the back is going to have a little bit of a, um, I don't want to say sparkle, but it's going to have the effect of the powder that I mixed in with it. So that's going to work out pretty good. And again, like at this point over here, like I said, the epoxy kind of like didn't like this edge over here, so it didn't fill in that little area. It's wood or it's epoxy over the wood, but it didn't fill it in the way that I wanted it to. It did the same thing a little bit around the edges of the back. Now the edges of the back, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. That actually makes it look a little bit, gives it a little bit of a um, uh, character to it. But on the top, I want it to be all uniformed. I didn't want anything to be different. So as you can see, I went with a lot of some gold hardware on there. I got a gold output jack plate on the back of there. I'm going to go with the gold neck plate on this instead of being black. They kind of go with the theme of what I'm doing with the gold black and then the pattern that's on the front of this. Even though there's some blue inside of it, well, I'm not going to go with any blues as far as uh, like pickup rings. Those are going to be gold. And I got, um, I don't know how many sets I ordered. I don't know if I ordered two sets or if I ordered four sets. I've been kind of doing a thing where I've been ordering, every time I order something, I order stuff in fives. And I can't remember if I did that with this or if it was four or two sets. So I'll have to look at that later on. So if I do anything else in this style, I'll have the parts that I need to get the job done instead of having waiting for ordering like I'm doing now. I kind of like the black as far as the pickup rings that are on here, but it just, I don't know, it just doesn't like do anything when you have a lot more of other stuff that has like a gold tint to it. I thought about doing just the pickup itself inside of here to give it a nice clean look around the edges. See if I can center that pretty good or not. Yeah, it's all right. They have a nice clean look around the edges. I thought about doing that. I like that because it, the um, pattern of what's on here kind of goes into it. But the EMG pickups have an insert inside of them for mounting. So when you put the screw and it doesn't thread through plastic, it actually threads through a brass nut basically. And I don't want to drill that out or try to pop those things out. I could damage the ear for the mounting of that thing and then I'm going to have to glue it together and then that's going to look like shit and somebody else is going to look at it and say, well, you know, I got a piece of crap here because the ears on the pickup are, are, are glued on, not solid. So I don't want to do that. So I got the gold instead, the match with it. This is the one of those Tessie switches for the, uh, which I know a lot of people are not into the whole kill switch thing anymore on guitars but i figured i'd incorporate it it's not going to hurt it. it's not in the way of playing anything that's why i mounted it over here you know if you hit the switch you're not going you shouldn't hit the uh, button at all and the way that it's wired in it's not a kill switch on the battery side of things it's a kill switch on the output side of things so it's wired in the same way you would wire in uh, a kill switch when you're you know doing your harness up for your guitar so it's on the audio side not the power side so when it kills you shouldn't have any funky noises or anything else because you're not just you know cutting out a battery you're cutting out the audio signal so that's it that's what's going on right now the Charvel guitar right now is all the masking is off of it I've got that one pretty much still setting uh, the paint this is why I don't like enamel paints enamel paints are soft uh, if you do any buffing with enamel paints without putting a clear coat on them, you'll actually see paint in the pad, um, which I don't like. And that's also telling you, too, that it hasn't cured quite solid yet as far as uh, drying process goes. And it takes a long time for it to dry and stays tacky for a good length of time. And I don't. that's why I don't like uh, enamel paints. Acrylics, lacquers are great. Uh, lacquer paint, the only thing about lacquer paint is the whole idea of, well, you could spray lacquer on top of anything, but you can't, or wait a minute, sorry, let me rephrase that. You could 
spray uh, anything on top of lacquer, but you can't spray lacquer on top of anything. That was, that's the whole formula of this because the lacquer is because it's got lacquer inside of it it'll actually act like a paint remover and end up uh, removing the paint instead of making a nice uh, finish on whatever you're spraying it on so that one you got to be careful acrylic you could paint pretty much over anything uh, same thing with enamels there, there's no chemical reaction with that but I don't like the enamel and since the way that I sprayed the red on that body are three mist coats which means they it got dusted it didn't get like full hard spray on there it got dusted and just enough dusting and you hold it back a little bit to where instead of it spraying a, a and you get a nice shiny finish because of how you sprayed it it comes out flat and but still gives you coverage the nice thing about that is is that it's not real thick like it's a full floral blast from the gun and uh, your tape lines are very minimal so when I put the clear over that yeah I'm not going to have like the swamp or flood to clear any place on the body and have like you know a real thick clear coat on there to where uh, you're gonna have cracking or something later on and again I've been using 2k stuff now I found a website that I've been uh, uh, sells 1k and 2k sprays uh, a lot of it is Max uh, Spray Max or Max Spray, whatever it's called. So it's a two part, and uh, you know you got your your hardener and your your paint, uh, and they sell a whole shitload of custom colors. And I saw this site, I'm like, oh fuck, you could buy it in a quart, or you could buy it in an aerosol. And uh, was it? Uh, House of Color, I think, is one of them. There's like a few other ones. So I started making a little bit of a list and ordering a shitload of paint. Uh, you know, and spray cans, rattle cans are like 42 bucks a piece. So that can get kind of expensive. The bad thing about it, too, is I think because of the uh, bottom that you have to kind of pop to mix, get the paint to mix itself and shake it up really good, um, their shelf life is pretty low. Now, This Max Spray here is the 2K Clear Glamour. I love this stuff. It really has a nice gloss finish to it, and it, it's not hard to spray. It, the drying time to the touch is pretty quick. Um, wait like 15, 20 minutes. Like, well, if it's a nice day, to say 80 degrees, 70 degrees outside or something like that, to where the sun is beating down pretty good and the sun feels warmer than the air temperature, the ambient air temperature itself, this stuff works really great. Cold temperatures, not so good, and extremely hot or humid temperatures, not good at all. But we've been having some really nice days. I love this stuff. This stuff works really great. you got to mix it on the bottom. Now, this can is three days old. It hasn't started to um, like cure itself and there's probably I want to say maybe half a can inside here this is what I used to spray the uh, now yesterday when I did the spraying on this neck it was a windy day so a lot of it turned into overspray blowing in the wind but I still was able to get a really nice gloss finish with no orange peel on it whatsoever it really came out really good so what you do with this stuff is you store it in a cold place and that'll stop the curing process of this to where it starts to form, um, starts to get really thick and it'll actually cure itself in a can. Because it says on here, I think you've got like uh, 24 hours or something like that to use this can. And if you don't use it all, well now it's waste. But so far, it ain't wasted yet. All right, you guys, you guys take it easy. Have a good one. I will catch up with you all later. I'm looking forward to finishing this project. I'm really looking forward to finishing the Charvel project that I am and then get started with the other projects that I got going on. So you guys take it easy. I will catch up with you later and enjoy your week. While it's still kind of nice outside because I think we're headed for some rain in the next few days, I think. So tomorrow I think is the next nice day. And then that's it, rain and cold. Later.